In this video, in Ebony the King's Return, we're going to be taking a look at the Battle of Constantinople. I just wanted to mention this guide is going to be more of an introduction to this particular event and just going through rewards, how it works, some of the battle mechanics, some of the strategies you can be using. Obviously, there are very advanced rally tactics. Uh, you can create many hives in Battlefield. There's a lot of different things you can do that's advanced that people would use in the All-Stars Battlefield. You can feel free to ask questions down below about some of those if you wanted some more advanced stuff, which I do know, but I'm not necessarily going to be covering this video. It's going to be a long one as is, so adding that stuff in will make it unnecessarily long, especially because most people watching the video are not going to need that information. If you wanted to, feel free to share this with your Alliance members or your server that might need it in order to succeed and to understand it if they're having their first try at the event. And of course, if you've not done it before, or you've only done it a few times, this will be helpful to you. Feel free to skip through the video because I will be starting with how you sign up, the rules and the buildings and a few different things. So if you didn't want that stuff, you wanted to skip over to some other stuff, feel free. Also, in the future, I'll be coming out with a video for the other Battlefield event and a smaller, quicker Battlefield overview that will go very quickly through all the different rules and buildings. But for now, we're going to get into this one. So, first, signing up. To sign up your alliance for an event, you have to go to the event center. Provided that your server is, I think, at least two months old, you will have these two options here. So we're going to be covering this top one for now. As you can see right now, when I'm recording this video, the next round sign up will open in about 20 hours. Once that timer is up, then I'll get a yellow button here to pick a time. You'll be able to view about five different times in your local date and time. So bear that in mind, it's your local time, it's not server time. It will tell you a two hour period that the event will be in and you can select one that's good for you and or your alliance members. Once you have selected a time and click confirm, you'll get an additional button next to it where you can select up to 20 players, including yourself, to participate in the event. If those 20 players don't all show up, then you might have less. So bear that in mind, make sure you talk to people, send out alliance mails, talk in alliance chat, to ensure the people you're signing up will be there. There's no point signing up all of the highest power players if they can't be there. So make sure you confirm that with them. You can do this on your own game. So I will try to be as quick as possible. There's a lot here though. And go into the details tab here in the information icon. I'll just run through some of the stuff here. But again, feel free if I skip anything to come in here and check for yourself and ask for clarification if you don't understand any of the points that I make or are in the video like in this text here so it will open once a week you can sign up 24 hours prior you get a 24 hour period once this 20 hour timer goes down for me i'll have 24 hours past that to sign people up and that's what this first part is referring to to be able to be eligible as an alliance it must be 14 days old and be top 10 in the alliance power in your server only alliance leaders and the second in charge people the r4s are able to sign up for a time and sign up each individual player 20 at most and the individual requirements is being in that alliance for at least three days and keep level 15 or above if you're not in alliance you cannot participate once you sign up, you'll be matched with an opponent depending on your ranking in the battlefield event between your alliance and server and so on. As long as those people have signed up for the exact same time slot as you. So depending on the time slot you pick, you could get the bad end of the stick or the opposite. It's a little bit of luck sometimes. When it begins, Everyone will be given a truce agreement inside of their regular server, so you don't have to worry about being attacked during the event. But visually on your screen, you will be teleported to a brand new map that's somewhat similar to the real map. 
It's obviously square. It has a big building in the middle and a bunch of other buildings that you don't usually see, which we'll get into that are lower down in this detail tab. Players will need to use their own advanced teleport items or gems to teleport around the battlefield. In addition to that, you will need to use an alliance limited number of teleport chances. So when you start out, you will have the maximum amount available to you. And you'll have to use both an advanced teleport or 2000 gems to teleport alongside using uh, an alliance teleport chance. Everyone on both teams gets the exact same amount to be using between each other, between your alliance. If you use all of them up, you're screwed, but there will be a way to get them back to replenish them with a particular building, which we'll get into as they go lower down. All troops that die in PVP battles or to the night hall marches will go straight to your hospital. They will not permanently die and you'll be able to heal them during the event if you feel like you want to, or you can wait until the end of the event and just sit it out for a while, wait until the end, and they'll be automatically revived. If you try to revive them inside of the event, it will not cost resources, but you will need to use speed up still, but you will have a bonus on that, so you won't have to use quite as many as you usually would to heal the troops, but it will still be quite significant unless you get your research up to ensure that you don't need to be using as many speed ups to heal them. If you're confused on any of this, again, leave comments down below. I understand I'm trying to go through it a little bit quickly, but it will still be a long video even with that. If you leave the battlefield, which is an option on screen, you're not going to be able to come back. You won't get re any rewards. So remember that before trying to do that, you can just sit still and let yourself die. While we're talking about the whole healing thing, the one thing you will permanently lose is traps. So if someone attacks you in one of the night hall marches, which is like an undead invasion, attacks you and kills your traps, that's permanent. That may change in the future, but for now, they will not come back. So bear that in mind. If you're going to be playing this event a lot, probably don't train any traps because it's going to be a waste of resources. So you can earn points by reinforcing buildings or being first person to actually capture a building inside of your alliance. As long as your alliance holds the building, you don't even have to reinforce it to get points as long as you were the first person to capture it. Otherwise you will need to reinforce it with at least one troop to get some points. So make sure you're doing that. If you're not using marches for other things that you reinforce some buildings, you'll get some points over time about every minute or a few minutes, you'll get some points. So it's definitely worth doing. So in the center of the battlefield map, there will be a throne like building that will earn you five scores. If you're reinforcing it and you're not the main occupier of it, you will not get as many points and the points that you do get will not be added to the total amount that your alliance has. So bear that in mind, if you've got a hundred people reinforcing a building, you're not going to get more points and be able to cheese the game that way. It just means you'll get more points for personal rewards at the end. Also, there are crystal mines that will earn you points. The portals will earn you similar points, but these are the ones where it will give you additional teleport chances for your alliance. This is a key building to get because if your teleport chances go to zero, you'll not be able to teleport. You'll not be able to avoid being attacked. You will have to march further. It would be harder to scout buildings and things like that. So ensuring that you get at least a couple portals, perhaps even up to the maximum of six will be great to ensure that not only you keep your Alliance teleport chances up, but you try to drive the enemy down to zero so that they're sitting ducks. They'll be trying to do that to you. So bear that in mind and work with your team to try to keep as many as possible and think of your own strategies to ensure that you can hold them for as long as possible throughout the two hour event. Now the battlefield hospital is another one people like to gather around and team up with other players to sit around it, maybe in between that and another building on the map so that they can keep an eye on it. That increases the whole Alliance healing speed. So if you are an Alliance that has a lot of speed ups, it's probably on an older server below 200. Keeping the battlefield hospital is going to be great because you might want to be healing a lot of troops 
keep yourself in the fight. Now the Blessing Towers will increase the attack and defense, so that's going to be great to keep as well. The points aren't too amazing, but keeping them for the additional attack and defense is great. Another key one that people love to get other than the portals is the Knight's Hall. Now this is similar to sending out undead invasions to your enemies every three minutes. I won't explain it too much because it will take a while, but basically it's great to slowly attack your enemies five, ten minutes and get their traps down, get their defenses down and weaken them over maybe a period of an hour if you're able to keep it. This is another building that you'll find a lot of big players will group around and fight each other and fight over the building for some time. So bear that in mind that you might want to be taking that, but if you are a smaller player out of your alliance that's competing, perhaps leave it to the bigger players because if you go over there you might die very quickly, especially if you go there as soon as the match starts. Killing scores won't really get into that, but basically, depending on the tier of troop you kill, you'll get more points, um, although obviously they're harder to kill as you go up, but you don't really need to worry about that too much. Now we'll quickly go through the rewards in the top right, you can look at this yourself. Depending on your personal scores, you'll get a range of badges, gems, resources, speed ups, gold, and runestone chests. And as you go down in the points, you'll get less. Badges are important for wonder levels and a few other things. Very important thing to get. That's why they're a key thing to be getting from these events. That's for a victory. If you lose, you'll also get the same rewards in a lesser denomination though. So bear that in mind. Winning is definitely very good to be getting as many badges as possible. There's not really any other ways to get them. So make sure you keep going after them through that. Also in this tab, if you wanted to, you can look at the top leaderboards. You can look at other things as well in there. Now, if people don't already know, mounted will kill ground troops, ground troops kill ranged, and ranged kill mounted, and siege are kind of middle of the road. They can kill everything, but they're kind of weak. With that, we're just going to go into the march presets of the rally spot. So this is something people tend to forget to do or at least check it even if you already have these check it so get a nice range general at the very least like this one or check out my other videos on my channel for that tick on all of your subordinate cities which we'll get into that a little bit more as well make sure you're setting a bit of ground and cavalry in your preset here a lot of archers you know a lot of siege don't necessarily copy what I'm doing. I have a mismatch of things because I'm not really building troops right now. I'm just building my keep level, but feel free to do it in a similar way if you can. If you have a larger march size, obviously take advantage of that as well. And you can layer in like a thousand of every single tier of every single troop type, which I haven't done just because my march size is kind of low, but you can absolutely do that. Like I've started to do it with some of these with only a couple of thousand of each. The reason I have low amounts of these ones is just because if I send a lot of them, they're just going to go and suicide themselves before the archers can even kill anything. Also, if you are a larger player, absolutely feel free to start new presets with a ground general. Mine's not really built up here. You're probably going to want at least a one or two million ground general. And you can do the opposite, but just kind of with ground troops and, you know, a few archers, a few cavalry and so on. I will be doing future videos on that type of thing, but you can just stick to the range marches for now if that's all you're capable of doing. Personally, that's all I'm capable of doing right now, so I'm not really covering that stuff. So make sure you have those presets. Make sure you check your general gear, refine skill books to ensure it's what you expect it to be using my other videos if you need for that kind of information or ask down below. Also, in addition to checking that, you're going to want to change your Monarch gear. So in the top left, you can create Monarch gear combinations. You can create infinite as far as I'm aware. I currently have this one here. So if I was to put the healing one on and then just change to the Archer one, I have Archer Staff, Grail, Decoration, and a Healing Crown for if I want to heal troops mid battle. So that means I'm fully set up to increase my range stats as much as possible. And in the bottom left, a March speed increase. You could do much size, probably not load, but much size if you wanted instead of the much speed. Make sure you have these set up and if you are trying to use different troop types at different times, 
to defeat different marches that the enemies have, feel free to have one like for ground, siege, etc. And switch between them. Make sure that you're using duties as well to increase your hospital's capacity, well not capacity, but healing speed and other things. You can check out in my duties video or ask down below if you wanted any advice on how to use those. Also, subordinate cities, make sure your debuff generals are assigned to these. For instance, Sixi, Nero, Andrew Jackson. I will have a future video in the next week or two um, for subordinate city generals. And you can also check out my best generals video currently to find out some of these other ones as well. Also, you can tick on all of these subs to make sure when you're defending your own city that they will fight for you. I think they might anyway, but tick them on and when the battle is over, make sure you tick them off. So when you're back in your main server, that no one's gonna attack you through your subordinate cities. Before we get into exactly how the event works and ghosting and things like that, I just wanted to mention that you need to take it slow. It's a two hour event and you don't need to worry about getting points right now. You can absolutely wait and you assess them. You look at their keep levels and their power levels and how big their alliance is. And you look at the leaderboards and maybe look at who's racking up some points quickly. Maybe scout a few of them, check out what they're doing, how they're playing, what buildings they are trying to get quickly. Take that into account and play the long game. If you try to win in the first 30 minutes, you may regret it. So take your time, take it slow, because a lot of people rush and want to get kills. For instance, a lot of people will use mounted troops to go sit inside of a building. If your enemy does that, you need to exploit that. If they're the largest player on the entire battlefield, including in your own alliance, so you can't defeat them very easily, team up with your teammates. Do an alliance rally with a lot of ranged troops, not only ranged troops, but a lot of them to defeat that cavalry. Although obviously do the due diligence in researching, okay, can we actually defeat that march and avoid it if you really have to. But if you can find a dumb march that someone has, or maybe even the inside of their city, they have left a million mounted or something, feel free to attack them. Always check your reports and scout a lot. And we'll get into that in a little bit as we play some of the footage from some of my previous Battlefield events. Just before we get into that, I'll show you how you enter. So if the event was on, you'll get a little red icon above this building right here. You would click it, depending on the battlefield you're in. For instance, for this one, it's going to be Constantinople. Click it, and you'll have a little enter Battlefield button. Alternatively, I think you can do it from the event center. And in this clip here, you can actually see this in action with me going to the Enter Battlefield button. And you'll see that I'm teleported into the safe zone for my alliance. You can see the timer in the top there. Once that goes down to one hour and 55 minutes, then I'll no longer be protected. Everyone will be able to teleport around, attack each other, scout and so on. So you have that five minute peace period to go to the opposite corner and to check out the safe zone of your enemies currently. There's no enemies, as you can see, actually teleported over into the battlefield. That's why when I scroll around in there, I cannot see anyone. You also see me here going into the subordinate city tab and making sure that I've got those ticked on. And feel free to go into your city buffs on your keep to make sure your buffs are active also. Also here you can see me going to the battlefield hospital as soon as the battlefield has started after the first five minutes. So you can see it's one hour and 54 minutes and 42 seconds, so that means it's been started for about 20 seconds. I'm attacking that building, taking it, recalling my troops, then teleporting to another portal. So these are all key buildings that you can be getting. And then I take this one. Now this is not necessarily the best method to be taking them because if there was enemies in this particular battlefield, which there happened to not be for the time being, they would end up killing me, catch my marches while they're outside of the city or as soon as they come back they'll attack my city and I won't be able to teleport away unless I'm really quick or I won't be able to ghost and hide my troops very quickly. Not recommended to do it this way but you absolutely can if you're very powerful and no one can kill you that's on the enemy team or 
you have no enemies because they're taking a long time to get into the event, then you can do that. Now, this is another clip from a different battlefield where I'm waiting for the timer at the top to go down from 10 all the way to 1, and then as soon as possible, I click Confirm to teleport next to this portal, and you'll see what I do differently to ensure that no one is able to kill me. So clicking that Confirm button, then Confirm again, using a preset that only has one troop in it, so that I can take the building for free without having to send a ton of troops. I go over to the opposite corner where the enemies are, I start a 60 minute alliance rally against one of their cities. I then go to bookmarks that I have and start more rallies against different people. It can be against anyone or any enemy building. And if you're in the other type of battlefield event, you can of course do it against boss monsters also, but not in this particular. So now you see that there's another player already trying to steal the portal that I have captured. So I recall my troops from there. Although it's not necessary, I've done it anyway. I'm now waiting until they get to that portal so I can scout the troops that they've put there. And then I end up sharing both the location of the portal and the scout to my alliance. So a bigger player can pick up those easy kills. Although I could probably kill the troops that are in there given the scout, it's best to give it to a bigger player that can get a better ratio and have an easier win so that resources speed up some things aren't wasted when they don't need to be. So right now I can sit there and not worry that my screen is flashing red. I can spam scout them, I can mess around with them, I could spam attack them with one troop to make their screen go red and just confuse them if I wanted to. That's why I sent an extra scout there as well as just to make sure they still had the troops there. So then I could tell one of my larger players in the battle that they could go get some easy kills in that location. I'm just checking what that other player's doing. That's always something worthwhile doing, following their march line, seeing where they're going. Also, make sure you aren't doing what this person's doing, just sending large marches to multiple buildings and taking their time. Um, because if you do that, you're actually going to be caught out quite a lot. And I do that often to people where they have very slow marches going in and out of their city, and it makes it easy to kill them in a lot of different ways. So here we see a freeze frame. You can see the scores at the top. You can see a portion of the battlefield map, the remaining time on the event. Most notably, you can always check in here how many players from your alliance are in the battle and the enemy alliance. You can see that we only have half as much players. That's a problem. It was very hard to overcome that and we ended up not overcoming it, but we did quite well. But that does mean that the teleport chances is quite low for us but they're maxed out because they have an easier ability to keep those portals because they have more people that can stay stationary on these buildings without having to move to other areas. Makes it much easier for them. So make sure you have bring as many people across as possible. By doing so, you should be able to keep your portal chances up. We will go through some other things that might take your portal chances down quite a lot, such as hiving with your teammates, but we'll save that for a little bit later in the video. But here you can also see me on the crystal mine over there. You can see the red icons where these other buildings on the map are captured by the enemy team. Again, make sure you keep coming into this tab, the battlefield map tab, scrolling around, clicking on the buildings, seeing where the enemies are, sharing locations with your teammates, and always strategizing throughout the entire two hour event. Stay proactive. Look where people are, scout them if you can, attack them where necessary, get your points, work as a team, ensure your bigger players are really pulling their weight and killing the bigger players of the enemy team as much as possible. Now in this other freeze frame we've got here, you can see the Knight's Hall. So these NPC, non-player controlled uh, marches are coming out and attacking every enemy city, depending on who owns this building. So if I were to hold this building, which we do right now, every few minutes a march is sent out towards the enemies, which will eventually destroy their troops and or traps. And it will light up their screen red a lot, which is very annoying for them, but it's helpful for us. And that's a very good building to be keeping. 
and you can also follow the march lines that you see to your enemy cities. As long as you hold the building, you can always follow it to them, which is going to be the easiest way to find out where everyone is, especially if they aren't on the buildings. But always be careful of putting too many troops in this because it does get rallied quite often by players. Now in this other freeze frame, we're just going to be showing you me force teleporting someone. Now the reason I'm doing this at that particular time is because this person keeps spam, scouting and attacking the portal that I'm trying to hold. I'm too small of a player in this particular battle to be trying to hold that portal as well as have troops inside of my city to make sure that I don't get sneak attacked when I try to recall my marches. And so I'm only taking the portal with a few troops, you know, 10,000 at most, you know, probably archers usually. And this player keeps training just enough or healing just enough to kill me and take me off of it or force me to recall my troops. Basically, they're trolling me. So to stop them from doing that, or at least to make them waste teleports, I am going to force teleport them. Technically, you have to attack them 10 times, but for just this clip, you're only going to see me attacking them one time and then they will be force teleported away. This is always something you can do. And you can also do what he's doing as well to force someone into doing that, which is a little bit dangerous because if you get caught out while you're trying to force teleport someone, you could lose troops as well if a bigger player teleports next to you. So make sure you're careful. But you can absolutely do what this guy's doing by trolling people with spam attacks and keep taking the buildings back with very limited troops, like one troop. Um, so you can see me using a good march against him just in case he still had troops inside of his city. But you can absolutely scout him first before attacking if you wanted to make sure. And then you see his city disappearing. Me sending one troop through a preset to the portal to make it easier to get that. And now I'm just going through some reports to check out what was going on between the defenses on things, some attacks. They weren't all the best necessarily because I was messing around a little bit, but that was fine. And then I start to realize that there's not very long left in the battle. And then I'm frantically going around on the map after recalling this march, trying to find some last minute kills to get. And this is an important lesson to take away from this video as well, is that right at the end of the battle, if you try to attack someone, usually the battle will not count. The attack will not count and you will not get points, which you'll see happen here. As I teleport in the last 10 seconds to this guy, try to attack him within the time limit and still speed up the attack anyway. Although you cannot see what my points were beforehand, you can trust me in saying that the points once the battle ends and the leaderboard comes up, which will happen for you also, that my points are still quite low. That was because I was scouting players and stuff, and you can do that. You don't always have to get high points. You can help out your teammates get higher points, which I did in this case for Ginger Ash and the Cord player there. And also you can see your server, their server, your alliance name, their alliance name. Now, these are the rewards. I got fairly low rewards because of my low scores in that particular instance. But of course, you still get the gems and resources and badges, which are all great rewards. And I'll show you me opening them. And also you can get score rewards that include resources. They go straight to your open inventory, like not into your items section. So make sure that your food doesn't disappear when that happens. And I'll just let this play with me opening the resource chests, gem chests, and so on. Now I just wanted to mention that I've got about four chests of each there, but you can get up to about 18 if you win and you get over 1200 personal scores and it will obviously increase the other badges and items that you get, the more scores you get even past the 1200. Now people have been asking for this video for some time. I've done my best to get some footage for it. I've been a little bit unlucky with that, especially because I've changed how I record things. So I've had to rely on only a few newer videos that I've made to pull from, to make clips. And I've been unlucky with 
people I matched up against or my alliance not coming into the battles as much as I would hope for. So I am looking to redo this video in future and I'll take any questions or suggestions that I get as an indicator of what I can do to improve the next video. I will be going through some key things that I've already mentioned and some things including some advanced strategies that I have not gone through just yet. Again, I'll remake this video in the future and if you have anything that you need to ask because I could have probably included more clips of the actual battlefield, feel free to let me know. I will leave a picture of the battlefield map in the comments below in the top pinned comment. So make sure you check that out if you need to share that with your Alliance teammates. So getting into some of the key things that I've mentioned throughout the video. When you join the battle, you will have five minutes to assess your enemy, look at their keep level, think about the kind of tier of troop they would have based on their keep level, to compare that to your own alliance, and then to come up with a plan, depending on how many people you have and how many people they have, by going to the battlefield map and checking the member count between the two alliances that are battling. Based on that, you can decide, do you want to only go for portals? bleed them dry of teleport chances would you like to do that and go to the knight's hall the battlefield hospital perhaps both or just one what do you, what kind of strategy do you want to go for figure that out execute it as an alliance make sure everyone has bookmarks ready to be able to easily ghost their troops by setting 60 minute alliance rallies with their troops Make sure everyone has their VIP active, so they have at least four marches or so for the battlefield. Once everyone's ready, go ahead, teleport out from that safe area, and begin carrying out that plan that you've made prior to the event, and during that first five minutes, where you cannot attack anyone and they can't attack you. And remember that countdown will come up at the top. Keep checking that battlefield map. When checking the battlefield map, You'll be able to see the teleport chances between the both alliances and the player count. You can also see the different buildings that are held by different teams. Always hold those portals as much as possible. Ghost as much as you can. Another thing I want to mention that's new. Just because you can win a battle against an enemy doesn't mean that you could have lost less troops. That you could have had a better ratio. Attacking a player and winning is one thing, but attacking them and losing minimal troops is another. So make sure you really take your time, you scout, you make sure you're sending the best march and where possible, group up with your teammates by teleporting near or right next to each other and set a very quick rally against the player ensuring you speed your marches to the player that set the rally, that you preemptively start the rally by spending 1,000 gems to do so, and then you speed the rally to the enemy to ensure they do not recall or teleport or ghost or anything like that. They still may do that, so bear that in mind. But that's going to be your best opportunity to increase the ratios that you're getting, which may matter. If you can have one player not needing to heal their troops the entire battle and get a thousand plus points that's fantastic and that's what you're looking for don't play the game as if it's only going to last for 30 minutes it's two hours take your time scout and if you have your troops die make sure that all of your players are scouting are spamming your enemy with rallies and one troops and sending one troop to random buildings and don't teleport around don't waste the teleport chances necessarily but just troll the enemy team light up their game with red screen flashes and things like that it's not going to work against the more advanced teams that know exactly what you're doing and don't care and just ignore it but it's still a good strategy for those players already knocked out and don't want to heal their troops with their speed ups you can absolutely do that now, Alliance Chat is your friend. So alongside doing those other things, always be sharing your scout reports, attack reports, defense reports, so players can see the stats of the enemy, can understand where they stand in the battle. Can they take on any of the enemies? Is there certain ones they shouldn't try to attack? 
Is there certain ones they should try to get to attack them? Always try to play the defensive where possible. You're going to have an advantage there, a home advantage. Of course, you can get reinforcements from your teammates. Team play is absolutely necessary. That's how in some previous battlefields, I've had significantly less players on my team than the enemy team. And we've still done pretty well given the power discrepancy and the player discrepancy. Another thing I want to mention, when we look to that clip of the Knight's Hall and all those marches going out, remember to follow the lines. If you own the Knight's Hall, follow the lines to the enemies and you'll find all of their cities. If you can't find them just by clicking around on the map to all the buildings, which I do regularly, clicking around on the map, trying to find people, see what they're doing, see what they're scouting, where their troops are. Now, a couple of more advanced strategies, not necessarily super secret or anything, but creating a mini hive. So most of your players, potentially even all of your players coming into one location, teleporting right next to each other near the battlefield hospital or the Knights Hall, grouping up if necessary, reinforcing each other or using that close proximity to easily set rallies against an enemy and send it to them and speed it up. That means that you're creating a very big powerhouse of power, all very close to each other, makes things easy. This is exactly what the larger players in All Stars Battlefield do. It's not necessarily going to be a great idea to be doing it if your server is less than six months old because it's just not going to work out. You need to be teleporting around and attacking players. It would be kind of useless to be hiving like that when the enemy isn't doing it either. So do bear that in mind, but it's something you could do if you're against a larger player that none of you can beat. Grouping up like that might help, but you have to kind of figure that one out for yourself, what exact instances it's going to help in. Now, also teleport switching. I don't see it too much, but I've seen it in All Stars Battlefield for sure, and a couple of other places. I don't currently really do it right now. It's not really particularly worth it at the moment. It's a little hard to do, but teleport switching just means you let someone attack you or wait until someone attacks your main city. When they start to do that, you teleport away. And one of your teammates that's a larger player that's ready to take that hit teleports into your spot. And instead of hitting you, they hit the other person. Or obviously your teammate can teleport out of the way and you can teleport into that spot. And that just means you take the hit for, for them. I have not actually definitely seen if this 100% works um, right now. They could have changed it, but as far as I know, it still works. And that's a great opportunity to get a lot of points when people aren't expecting to get hit so bad. But of course, usually when that happens, especially in All Stars Battlefield, they do manage to recall the marches before it hits. This event is one of the more complicated ones, or at least it can become complicated. There's a lot to explain especially if you want to be quite thorough. And that's why this video has gone so long. So sorry it's so long. I'm sure there's still, even with how long it's been going, some things I missed out. And if you find any of those things that I missed out that are important to note, leave it in the comments down below. Do bear in mind some things I have purposely left out, but I will do a new video in the future that I'll try to condense it a little bit and make an overview one of both Battlefield events. That'll be even more condensed, hopefully in under eight minutes. If you have any questions, leave it down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.